Welcome back to Stonopolis, episode 10, and let's first of all go off what I did off camera. So I added a second set of four furnaces to make the um, void nuggets and ingots. I also added, I don't know how many I added actually, I'd like to say two, two more rows of resource generators to make the void chunks, but I'm not sure how many were there to start with. That, of course, is a problem in that the hoppers down this end were getting bunged up. So I had to change this. So now each row, oops, let's get back up, each row of resource generators hoppers into the one at the front and then all the ones at the front there hop onto these immersive engineering conveyor belts and then they go into this drawer which has had an upgrade applied to it. It was the gold upgrade. That I was showing you how to um, extend the storage controller from. So that has now gone up. Now because our system has stopped, i.e. these two, there is a build up. But I'm pretty sure once these start running again, it's not going to be enough and we're going to have a shortfall. So we shall see. I don't think I did anything else down here. Um, that's filled up. So let's see where these stopped at eventually. Now they are both identical and that's the point in which we stop at with this much redstone on the system. So what's that? 9, 11, 13, 15 and a half stacks. Or almost 15 and a half. Exactly the same amount in the lapis stone alloy. Which you'd expect because it's the same redstone layout as, as that is. So what we're going to do now is we're going to attach this node onto the routing network and that should start pulling out the iron into the strainer here. So there's the iron. The iron should come out and get put into these. So that's copper. So there's the iron dust and then the iron dust from there gets shipped all the way back and into our storage drawer. Or not. Oh, there we go. Took its while. Took a while, but uh, there, there we go. So first things that I'm going to do today is I'm going to put all these storage drawers here onto another controller. And we're going to simplify the use of these routing nodes because I've, I've kind of figured out from the use of that one over there that we can simplify this. So I'm going to take this framed storage controller. Now, they don't have to be attached. I could put this over here or I could put it anywhere, to be honest. I mean, I could put it down there. Um, in fact, why not? Yeah, let's put it over here and I can show you this. So I'm going to put it in the wall here. We need our linking tool and we shift right click on it and you'll see there that is the range. And wow, that actually is perfect. It's absolutely perfect for getting all these in. So all we need to do is shift and right click and add all these in and you'll notice they don't have to be connected. So that's all those storage drawers there attached to this controller. Don't know if there's any point in adding that one. I suppose we could and then we don't need this routing node because all these here are input routing nodes. So we can literally put all four of those onto this controller. So we can do the same with that one. Just wondering if that has one on the back. I think it does, doesn't it? Yeah, it has to have one on the back. Yeah. But we're probably going to need two on this one anyway. We're going to probably need an input and an output. So we'll, for now, we'll leave it like that. So you can see if you hover over it and press shift, all the containers which are attached to this storage controller. You can see there we've got bamboo, sugarcane, the green, orange, rays, black, 
and the redstone and the lapis and of course sticks and quartz they're all on there so now what we can do here is we can take out all these and break these nodes just gotta be careful nothing drops into one of these hoppers so we should have four and I should have four filters which I do so we can now oops wow don't don't break stone with a pick that went absolutely ham that did I'm going to put it so it's visible and then we we don't have to mess around breaking blocks and and whatnot so we can put one input routing node on here and we want to combine all these filters so let's take the orange leaves and log and just add redstone and lapis to it And now we can add that into there, make sure it's all connected, which is good. And then we simply connect this node up to our network. And then we need to check that we didn't break, uh, which we did. We didn't break this section here. And that's the master routing node up there. Now there is one more, so that goes to the master routing node, that goes onto that tree up there, that goes onto the one down the bottom, so that should be all be good. It should all be still connected and it should all still be working, let's just have a look. Is that staying, oh this one's not connected, oh it is connected. This is not connected to that. The guess. Something isn't connected here. Yeah, we've got all the dust in here. Look, it's not going into this system. But that's connected to that, which is connected to that, which is connected to that. Which is all connected. So why isn't stuff going in here? It's copper and iron dust. That's the routing node iron dust okay so no real idea what caused that to stop working but whatever it is it's now fixed I've double checked everything and stuff is moving as it should getting processed getting furnished and then it's going in the storage drawers down there so yeah weird one I initially I think this this one here I broke this one and then that side all started working and then I reconnected that up and then now that side started working so yeah don't really know it's a little bit finicky whatever right so what we're going to do today well today we're going to automate the manufacture of our iron meshes and to do that will need a set of these. So what you need for this is an assembler. So 
Now let's just have a quick look at where our ins and outs go. Now I think this is pretty straightforward. So power is connected via the top there. We have redstone control on both sides. That's a fluid input, but we're not actually going to be using fluid for this. And then you have your items going in and your output. So it's pretty much straight across the belt. So we'll just put it up this way. Like so. Uh, now we're going to need a little bit of room both sides, but that should be enough there, I think. Yeah, cause it's only three by three. Let's see, we want three that side. Leave this side, light engineering, and then our input and output. Now, these are slabs, otherwise that would be the same height as that middle one. So slabs on the back and front row. And do we finish off with slabs? No. So we have slabs on that side, this side, and then three of these in the middle, and that should be it. And I believe the block that we right click is the input belt, which will be this one. And there we have it, our assembler. So we need to hook it up to power. Uh, well, we've got the cables and everything, so we might as well bring the wiring down to here. That should be that. It'll all be powered up. Yep. So in here, we need to put the recipes that we're going to uh, that we're going to make. So we'll need to grab some sticks, four initially anyway, and some iron. Don't have any iron on me. So we'll need five iron. And then we need to put the recipes in here. So as oh, we didn't actually need all of it. There's recipe number one, and you can do up to three recipes. So that's the iron mesh. All you do is take the output routing node, place it against the input. Select the multi-block machine, and in this case we have to use a priority because I think this is looping, and that inserts the items directly into the assembler. So all we have to do now is come across here to our input routing node here and edit this to add sticks and that in theory should put the sticks in here too and it should start crafting wow okay that's quick has it turned off already Um, why is it not turning off? Well, I mean, it doesn't matter because it's full anyway. Uh, but I'm guessing that must be two different redstone signals on the back and front. Uh, maybe we should be going the other way, but looking at that, it doesn't matter because there's because this is full. There's nothing actually coming out. 
So this should all now be paused. That won't put any more into the assembler because it's already got what it's expecting. So I'm guessing this doesn't need to be here. Now, if you had extra belts on here, then that would be a problem uh, on the on the output or the input, for a matter of fact, because it would just get thrown up into the world. Right, so we've got our input routing node on. We just need to hook this up, which it's already hooked up to that node there. So all we need to do now is tell our ex existing output routing nodes so this is the output routing node here. And uh, we can test this one because it's running out. So on this side, I'll take that out. And on here, can I drag from this side? I can. We can tell it to insert an iron mesh and that then inserts the iron mesh and it will already have crafted another one. Build that back up. That is absolutely wonderful. So all we need to do now is go around and edit these filters. Adding in the wire mesh. So that's those two strainers. And we need to do these strainers here. That can get rid of this. So that's an output routing node. So we simply take the iron mesh, add it to the filter, pop it back in. So that one's that side. So we'll do the other side. So iron mesh, iron mesh. And that's those two strainers done, so we don't need these anymore either. I'm going to run out of room here. Let me put these iron meshes in this drawer. And then we can remove these two hoppers. I knew that was totally going to happen, but it doesn't matter. Let's double check this is all working. So if I take this iron mesh out, it should automatically refill, which it did straight away. And I'll take that one out, and then that went back in as well. So we don't need to go down here anymore. Craft those together, make a better one. Now, there's no point automating all the ones that are down the bottom down here to input the meshes. These are all manual ones. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to have a surplus of meshes anyway from the ones I've just taken out. Pop that one in there. I did notice that we've got our glowstone here, which that will complete the netherrack chapter. Netherrack chapter. So that's done. Put that in there. Put the iron back in there. Yeah, I'm a little bit concerned that this might be looping. Hopefully it won't. Hopefully it knows that it's, there's two nodes there. So although we've got iron ingots going in and iron ingots coming out, I'm hoping that that's just not sending stuff through the loop. But there's no way of telling. It's not doesn't seemingly affect our TPS at all. Right, so that's meshes automated. And should we upgrade our meshes to a later, later date, then all we need to do is change this recipe, change the input on here, and then the, obviously all the output um, nodes as well. Right, so how's our supplies doing? That's probably doing copper. 
There's no round robin on this, which is so this one here is actually just getting filled up and then it spills over into the next one. So I've just been manually taking out the stack which has been in this top hopper. Unless I forgot to filter all the others. It should be iron and copper on all. Ah, okay. That would be why. I would be why the iron's only going into that hopper. Because I forgot to put the iron dust on all the other ones. Don't forget, if you want to limit these, you can. All you, all you need to do, instead of saying all, you could put, say, 32, and then it would only put 32 in. Obviously, the, the furnace will fill up to 64, uh, but the hopper then will stop at 32, and then it will start on another one. Otherwise, it, it's just going to fill one up at a time. Let's see, is this... Yeah, this. you see, these are really fast. So I think we're always going to have that amount of uh, void iron ingots in this chest, uh, unless we run out of the materials, of course. Um, and this one will certainly keep up for that. So I think this is going to be going non-stop now. It's all a case of whether this process works or not. Just don't think. Is this a hundred percent chance? Oh, it is a hundred percent chance, right? Okay. Wow. So yeah, that's pretty much going to be full time doing iron. So I'm glad we didn't actually put iron in this one. This one's still doing copper. Yeah, full time. Right. So the next port of call here is we need to make sure this has an upgrade. And it currently does not. We don't want this drawer filling up. If that drawer fills up, then... Uh, is that a bad thing, actually? If the drawer fills up... Yeah, then this chest down here will fill up with iron ingots, won't it? This will fill up with iron ingots. And that will stop our copper from being processed as well. So we don't really want that to happen. Hmm... Yeah, should be okay. You can never have too much iron. And we certainly don't have enough at the minute. Uh, I, I, I'm just a bit concerned that this, this is actually looping. There wouldn't be any reason why it wouldn't loop. We, we can't tell it not to insert iron into here. The only thing we could do is not extract iron from here. If we took that out of there, the iron which is going from that chest to this output is set at zero priority, whereas this one is set at one, so it will always go here first. So we could do that rather than, than have this potentially looping. So yeah, that, that, we'll try that because, I mean... We've, that's, you know, it takes quite a long while for these meshes to, to get used up. So I can't see that being a problem. And and like I said, the iron is going to get processed non-stop. So, yeah, I can't see why that should be an issue. Oh, sh oh. Mm, might be a better way of doing this as well, but we'll, uh, we'll leave it for now. That looks good. So mesh is automated. Um, I do need a couple more strainers because there are other things we can automate. In fact, we can use... No, let's not use the iron. Let's use bamboo for making strainers. So we want, what we want here is... Um, 
put four meshes to make two more strainers and I, I shall then tell you why we're doing this. So at the minute we've got a uh, tin up here, but tin isn't being made. Um, oh, I made all these manually. So we can actually make tin. If we take the, I think it's grey leaves to make tin. Either grey or light grey. Right, so if you look here, if you place water above it, it makes silver. If you place the life essence above it, it makes tin. Now that's light grey, and that's light grey. So same leaves, two different outputs. So what we can do here is we need some more life essence. Um, life essence. Right, so again, looking at this, uh, we can actually ut utilize this chest. So this is the output routing node. And what we want to do is, let's see, that's left, right, top, bottom, front, back. Well, which way is back? Left. If we have a node in here that says insert... Gray leaves. We need to put a hopper down here at the bottom. Now I'll use a metal one because I've got those on me. And oops, no. Strainer. That should be putting the leaves into here. Why is it not? Um, I don't know if I can get to the node now. Because it's above there. So, did I put, where did I put that filter? I didn't put the filter in, did I? That's why. Dip. Uh, that's still not put the, oh, that's because we've not got the grey leaves on the network. All right. Um. And while we're at this, we can actually do this one as well. Now this one's going to be a bit weird because I uh, don't want to break that. Got fluid above it. Um, I need a way round here to get to that block to put the fluid in. Uh, I don't think we can because it's water. Uh, I'm going to have to get in this way. Oh, this is going to dig everything up. Yeah. So on, um, let's see, be this side, east. We also want light grey leaves. And we'll put the strainer there. So light grey leaves are on the this this chain here so all we need to do is take this and say insert light gray leaves and then those should both fill up with light gray leaves and there they are we needed to put the meshes on as well
Right, so that shouldn't have a mesh. That should have a mesh. That should have a mesh. Yep, all good. So in this one here, we need a bucket of life essence, but in the other one, we need a bucket of water. So this creates silver nuggets. Uh, now I haven't got a copper uh, hopper there, and the other one, as you can see, is creating. Oh, something got washed out. Is that? Oh, the node underneath got washed away. Where's the node? Did I pick it up? Yeah, it did. Input routing node. Yeah, you have to watch it be with the nodes because they're they're not water resistant. So this node has to go back. Um. So we also need void tin. Now the silver is not void version, so it's just standard silver nuggets. So they're currently in there. You'll see they're not void silver. And we need to hook this back up because it broke. And the tin will stay there. And when I put this hopper in, so will the silver nuggets because we haven't actually told them to go anywhere yet. Now let's fill all this back in because we're done in here. And before we fill it in, let's just make sure our connections are not broken anywhere else. Right, because we've got silver and tin in here and not copper, the copper is coming from the orange tree leaves. Um, that looks good as far as that's concerned. So that can all be filled in. I believe I might regret this. Oh, oh yeah, did regret it. Wow, that nearly killed me. Yeah, when I jump up there, that wire there that coming from this to, to that relay uh, is I'm going to get hit. So I needed to do that from the other side, which it should be safe to come up here to lay nothing to that wire. Um, but I think, yeah, it's all covered up anyway. That's fine. So I've got to watch the hazard that is the um, HV network. So now what we need to do is we need to take the void um, tin, put them into a compacting drawer to remove the ingot. And as far as the silver nuggets concerned, they can go directly into a compacting storage drawer down there and they will automatically get converted. So we need to make two more compacting drawers. A uh, basic one and a standard one. Now, tin has already got its compacting drawer here. Silver doesn't. I've just got a silver in a frame drawer there. So I need two more compacting drawers. Let me just check I haven't got any. Frame drawer. And there's no more in there. So what we can do is utilise this input routing node here. And we want the two, the simple one. Put the tin, void tin in, to then take the ingots out, put them into a strainer. So we need another filter, which we've already got. So this filter here has void tin. And we want to be the upside. This is a, oh, this is an input as well. We need an output node. I wonder if it's on the back. There has to be an output node on there. So we 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 do actually need that. But I don't think I can use the output node which is on the back of there and the input. I suppose we could actually. If I remove this compacting drawer from here. 
and break that. There's the output routing node. So this one here is the one that needs the void tin. Uh, no, didn't mean to do that. Let's ignore that. Let's put this one back. It needs to be at uh, this side. Is the void tin. And then if we put the simple compacting drill there. Oh, it needs prepping. The drill needs prepping, doesn't it? Ah. Uh. I'm just quicker than the hopper. Certainly am. Now they've gone in. So now it's filling up. And then on this node here, we just need more filters. I'm surprised it's used all eight stacks already. Oh, it's because they've not got the um, upgrades in. Right, okay, that makes sense. So yeah, that actually is a problem because we we know that although there's two nodes that are inputting these light grey coloured leaves, they will all go into one. That's just how the nodes work. They won't chop and change. So what I'll do is I'm going to make two more of these upgrades off camera and we'll change the node to quantity one for the light grey. That means if there's one already in here, it will go into the other one. And that's the easiest way to solve that issue. So what we need now is on here. Uh, where should we put it there? We need to put a frame compacting drawer. And insert the silver into it. And then on this input filter or output filter, output routing node here, we simply insert the silver nuggets. And now that should get populated. There you go, it's going up. That's now inserting the nuggets. Right, so we just need one more strainer set up. Process the void tin. Now, let's have a quick look and see whether we can't utilise one of these. You see, the problem is there's going to be a backlog. As there's 182 void tin nuggets in there. We can process a couple of these manually down the bottom just to knock that down a bit. Uh, one thing we do need to do is lock that drawer. Because should it empty, it, they will not fill back up again. So we need to lock that drawer. Have a look at the top there. See it? So let's see how we get on with utilising. Uh, see, that is never going to run out of iron because that, that machine is actually faster than the, the process to um, strain them. So we, if, if any, we can only use this side. Now, as you can see, the orange leaves are zero. And we will have a finite number of these tin to do it. So let's not take the nuggets out. Let's take the ingots out of here. Have we only got 20? Right. There's only 20 in there. So let's try adding that to what we're looking at east side. This side here. Let's add the void tin that side 
this one needs a filter, doesn't it? It does. Needs a filter. There's no filter on the west side here. We need another filter. And in this filter, we want the void tin ingots. And it's the west side one. Now tin should be going in here after that copper's gone. Yep, and there we are. Now, so this doesn't hog this machine, and we catch up with the backlog. I'm just going to leave one in there, and I'll process the, these 19 separately uh, down the bottom. And then that's not going to create too much of a hog a resource hog. Now, I've not told it to do anything with the tin dust. So this input routing node here, we need to put tin dust on here. And then uh, let's utilize just this furnace here because it's going to get used last for some reason. And on the east side of this one, we'll put the tin dust. That should put said tin dust in there. It should get furnished, should drop into that chest. And then we need to change this node here to say input the tin ingot. And then that disappears, and the only place it can go is into this drawer up here. And this is our tin. We're at 418, and now we just ticked over to 419. How are we doing iron-wise in here? So that's fine. Don't know if we've actually used that any yet. Yeah, I think having dedicated furnaces for this setup might be a better way to go. Because um, as you can see here, the, these are going to mix and match. But that's not really a bad thing, I suppose. Not really that much of a bad thing. Let us get rid of these Voitin ingots down here. So we'll put half in there the other half in there and that will process the backlog so it's not hogging this strainer with the backlog and then hopefully we're going to get a nice swap between the uh, tin and copper so as you can see there wasn't any tin in and the copper's just hopped in there yeah that's, that should be fine we don't need this hopper anymore this is sure that we have got The meshes, yeah, we've got the meshes. We don't need that. Put that mesh in there. I'll take these and pop them down the bottom for the manual use. So what uh, what have we done today? We've got our uh, void iron ingots processing now. We've got our automated system up for adding uh, iron meshes, which is the highest we can make at the minute, I believe. I hope. Tell me we can make uranium mesh. Oh, we can make a gold one, but I think, is that the same tier? Oh, no, it's not. It's a higher tier. And we can make quartz one. Let's see, durability. Well, we don't want to make the gold meshes because they've only got 128 uses. The iron mesh is 526. Now the quartz one has a 640. So we could actually produce these because we are making quartz here. So unless a specific process demands that we use a specific tier mesh, now that cycles only tier ones for the copper 
but I think that's just because it's minimum tier. Yeah, it does actually say in the window, minimum mesh tier one. So unless a specific process demands a specific mesh type, we should be fine using tier four meshes. So what I'm going to do actually is um, remove that filter from there. So this will get used up and then we'll have a backlog of all these iron meshes in here. Uh, and we'll swap back to quartz. Should have looked at that before I set that up. Because obviously quartz meshes are better. So yeah, recapping. Automatic meshes. Completion of the iron ingots. We've now set up automation for our tin. And aluminium is under that cloth. Uh, there, the tin... It's been processed in here with the copper and there is no processing required for silver. It doesn't make void silver. So the silver is coming direct into here and then the tin is coming into here and we now switched not only this section to a storage controller but the whole of that section as well which makes the input and output onto the blood magic network simpler by just using the storage controller. It's connecting the drawers up. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. And please like and subscribe. And I will catch you in the next one. So stay safe and goodbye for now.